voltmeters, ammeters, and terminal voltage going to be the topic of this lesson in my new general physics playlist, which when complete will cover a full year of university algebra-based physics. Now in this lesson, we're going to talk about how we measure the potential difference across a resistor in a circuit and how we measure the current across a resistor in a circuit. And then we'll spend just a little bit of time talking about the internal resistance in a battery and how the terminal voltage that's coming off that battery is uh, in all likelihood going to be a little bit lower than the EMF of the battery itself. My name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, if you're new to the channel, we've got comprehensive playlists for general chemistry, organic chemistry, general physics, and high school chemistry. And on chadsprep.com, you'll find premium master courses for the same that include study guides and a ton of practice. You'll also find comprehensive prep courses for the DAT, the MCAT, and the OAT. So we're gonna start by talking about voltmeters, and a voltmeter measures volts. Uh, and so in this case, it's measuring the voltage, or more properly called the potential difference, across a resistor in a circuit. Uh, and to accomplish that, you want to hook up your voltmeter in parallel with the resistor of interest. Uh, and the idea is that the voltmeter itself has its own internal resistor. Uh, and so we're effectively hooking up the resistor of the voltmeter in parallel with the resistor of interest. You might recall from our last lesson that resistors in parallel have the same potential difference across them. And so we're really measuring the potential difference across the resistor and the voltmeter, but because it's in parallel with the resistor of interest, it will be the same potential difference. Now we want to affect the circuit overall as little as possible. And the way we're going to accomplish that is by using a very large resistor in our voltmeter. In fact, when we talk about what's known as an ideal voltmeter, uh, kind of a theoretical construct, it has infinite resistance. And so if we had infinite resistance here, what that ultimately would mean is that all the current in the circuit would go through the other resistor. You might recall from our last lesson as well that we said when resistors are in parallel, uh, the current prefers the path of less resistance. Well, if this was infinite resistance, that would mean zero current flows through it and all the current would flow through the other, just as if the voltmeter wasn't there and it wouldn't largely be affecting the circuit in any appreciable way. Well, again, we can't really have infinite resistance, but we can have very large resistances associated with our voltmeters on the order of like kilo ohms or even mega ohms so that it really influences the circuit in very minor fashion. Now, similarly, we can hook up uh, an ammeter to a circuit to measure current this time. So instead of measuring the potential difference, we're now measuring the current in amps. Uh, and to do that though, instead of hooking up your ammeter with a resistor in parallel, you actually want to hook it up in series. And again, just like with the voltmeter, there's an internal resistor in our ammeter. Uh, and in this case, by hooking it up in series, uh, we learn that two resistors in series have the same current. And so the current I measure in the ammeter is the same current that's flowing through this resistor and therefore be the same. Now, we're going to see the opposite, though, for an ideal ammeter. If I put uh, a resistor in my ammeter that had infinite resistance, that would effectively make the current flowing through the circuit zero according to Ohm's law. So if you have infinity for the resistance, current goes down to zero, they're inversely related. And so in this case, it's the opposite. For an ideal ammeter, it has a resistance of zero. And that way it affects uh, the circuit to no degree, so to speak. Well, again, in, that's a theoretical construct. It's not really possible, but you want to have a very low resistor associated with your ammeter. So that makes a good transition to our first question. We're actually going to see how much the ammeter actually affects the measured current reading. All right, the question says, what will be the reading of the ammeter in the following circuit if the internal resistance of the ammeter has a magnitude of 160 milliohms? All right, now in practice, uh, lots of ammeters or multimeters or multimeters, depending on who you talk to, uh, which have the function of an ammeter uh, built into them, uh, often have variable resistances by the turn of a dial, things of the sort that you can choose. Uh, and so this might be one of them, but the truth is we probably would want a smaller value because we're going to see that this is probably going to have a, a little bit more of an impact than we want it to. But I picked the number here because I wanted it to actually have a measurable impact. But a real ammeter might have a lower setting here for the resistance so we could actually affect the circuit even less. Now we're going to do this calculation twice. We're going to do it once without the ammeter, pretending it's not even hooked up, and then do it again with the ammeter hooked up. So without the ammeter, we can just simply use Ohm's law, delta V equals IR. Rearrange that to get I equals delta V over R. And from here, we can see that delta V is 12 volts. And if the ammeter wasn't hooked up, we just have the three ohms of resistance. 
and we could see that it would be 4.0 amps. Now what happens here if we include the ammeter, which again has 160 milliohms or 0.16 ohms, how would that influence things? Well, once again, we'd have to do this calculation, I equals 12 volts, but it wouldn't be over 3.0 ohms. So in this case, the equivalent resistance, and for uh, two resistors in series, it's purely additive. And so in this case, we take the three ohms and we'd add to it 0.16 ohms in the same units. And that's easy enough to see that we get 3.16 ohms. So and now we'll let our calculator do the heavy lifting for us. And 12 divided by 3.16 is now 3.797. We'll round that to two sig figs, 3.8 amps. And so with an ammeter, your reading is actually always gonna come out at least a little bit low. But if you can choose the smallest resistance possible that still gives your reading on your ammeter, you're gonna get the, the least impact uh, of the ammeter lowering the measured current. So we're gonna conclude this lesson by just briefly talking about what's known as terminal voltage. We'll see how that's different from the EMF of a battery and why it's different, uh, and see that it's due to what's called the internal resistance of a battery. Now, up till this point, there's a couple things that we've been ignoring, and one of them is this internal resistance. We haven't factored into any of our calculations in, involving like finding the equivalent resistance of a circuit and stuff. But there's one other thing we've been ignoring as well, uh, and maybe you found yourself already asking the question why. So if you notice, when we found like the equivalent resistance of circuits in the last lesson, we, we looked at resistors in series and resistors in parallel, and whether we added the resistance directly or added them as reciprocals. But one thing we never factored in was the resistance of the wires. We just factored in the resistors in the circuit. Well, even though earlier in the, the chapter, we learned how to calculate the resistance in a wire, how it was related to the resistivity and the length and the cross-sectional area, but we usually ignore it. We're usually just gonna assume it's sm sufficiently small that we'll just ignore it and only factor in the resistors in the circuit. Well, here's the other thing we've been ignoring besides just the wires, and that's the internal resistance of the battery. So it turns out in addition to the resistors in the circuit, which we'll now call the load resistors, there's an internal resistor as well. And I, I shouldn't really call it an re internal resistor, which is we treat it as an internal resistor that's just in line with the rest of the circuit. And if you notice, in this case, that puts it in series with the load resistor. So, and that makes a good segue to talking about the problem at hand here. We're gonna calculate the terminal voltage here. So, which is just the voltage across the load in the circuit. And the question reads, what is the terminal voltage of the battery depicted having an EMF of 12.0 volts and a resistance of 0 0.100 ohms across a 2.00 ohm load resistor? All right, so ultimately out of the 12 volt EMF, in the past, we would have just assumed all 12 volts was gonna be the potential difference across the two ohm resistor. And if we wanted to find the current in the circuit, we would have rearranged Ohm's law, delta V over R, and we would have just said 12.0 volts all over 2.00 ohms, and we would have gotten 6.00 amps for the current in the circuit. But we were ignoring that there was any contribution to this internal resistance of the battery. Well, we're gonna factor that in now. So if we did factor it in, well, again, these two resistors are in series, and to find the equivalent resistance of the circuit, we just simply add them, and two plus 0.1 is 2.1, and that's gonna change our calculation ever so slightly here. So it's now 12.0 volts over 2.1 ohms. We're gonna find out we have less current than we would have thought. Uh, and so 12.0 divided by 2.1, gets us 5.71 amps. Okay, so ultimately what's going on is this. Not only do we have a lower current in the circuit, but that means the potential across this resistor is lower than we would have expected. It, and that's what we refer to as the terminal voltage. How much lower is it? Well, what you do is you take the EMF and then you subtract the little bit of the potential drop that is now attributed to the internal resistance. And then the rest of it that's left is the terminal voltage that's ready for the load, so to speak. All right, so we're taking that EMF and subtracting off, notice this is just Ohm's law, V equals IR, where lowercase r represents that internal resistance. All right, so we already calculated the current. Had we not, we'd have to do that at this point, uh, but we'll need it for this calculation here. We'll take the 12.0 volts minus now the 5.71 amps 
times that internal resistance of 0 0.100 ohms. And in this case, we'll take 12 minus that previous answer I had times 0.1. And now we're going to get 11.43 uh, volts, which rounded to three sig figs would be 11.4 volts. That's our terminal voltage. So if you notice, we're losing 0.6 volts. There's a 0.6 volt drop right here. So we have to subtract that off from the 12 volt EMF to see that it's only going to be an 11.4 volt drop on the load, so to speak, accounting for the fact that we don't have a 6 amp current. It's now only going to be 5.71 amps instead. If you found this lesson helpful, consider giving it a like. Happy studying.